freelance and self-employed stylists can prepare for reopening as lockdown eases. Um, and I'm really excited to say we've got James Earnshaw with us, who is a freelance stylist and he's also a Weller Professionals expert. Um, so he's going to be with us today and talking us through a bit his, about his journey through lockdown and how he's now um, getting himself and his clients ready for the return of Sun on Life. So hello there, James. How are you? Hi, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. Sunshine, sun is shining down here, so that's pretty good. Makes all the difference, yes, doesn't it? Exactly. So exactly. how how has um, lockdown been for you for a start as a freelance stylist? Um, it's been long and crazy. And I think for everybody, you know, the uncertainty at first was very difficult, um, especially when you're self-employed, because, you know, you're completely in charge of your income and your work and everything like that. And it's all completely been taken away from you. So I think I took the first for a couple of months just out and just kind of ignored it, to be honest. And then as stuff started to get kind of better, I then kind of started to think, OK, now I can plan and prepare. So, yeah. Fantastic. And this session is supported by Weller Professionals. So if you want any more information about how Weller Professionals can help you during the lockdown and beyond, then please do go to education.weller.com. And do um, put in your questions to James as well during our chat. We'd love to hear from you. And I'm sure James would love to know how he can share his experiences as well. We love right. a question, don't we, Laura? We do, we <laughs> do, definitely. Um, so I guess as um, lockdown's easing now, James, I guess are you kind of getting now more prepared for when you're going to be going back into the salon? And for anyone who's watching, do you want to maybe explain your setup in your salon? Because obviously you're technically freelance, aren't you? Yeah, so I went freelance in January, so the absolute worst timing you could possibly <laughs> choose. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in my salon, I usually work on a Friday, Saturday, um, self-employed, so I'm in charge of, kind of in charge of my own stock and my own clients and my mm -hmm. prices, everything like that. However, the salon does provide like, like PPE before Corona, so like normal gowns, aprons, everything like that. Um, I do clients that I've done for years, um, mainly colour clients, mm. and um, through Friday and Saturday. Um, that's normal, but obviously things now have changed. Um, but yeah, I work in a great salon called Hazel and Hayden in Birmingham. Um, and yeah, so self-employed is was great for the two months that I was there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, so then obviously you went into <laughs> lockdown like everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and then things have changed. So I guess as a self-employed stylist, there's a lot more weight on your shoulders in terms of getting yourself ready for going back to work than maybe an employed stylist in the salon. Um, so what have you kind of been doing to get yourself ready for, um, make, for when you're allowed to go back to work? I think, I think there is more pressure in a way because you know you are in charge of everything, but then also I see that as a positive because I don't have to worry about like, shifts or opening hours or anything like that because I can kind of do that myself so yeah I mean definitely what I have been doing is contacting my clients um you know starting with my favorites <laughs> as we all do <laughs> you'll see everybody um and I've been kind of talking to them just about what they've been up to with their hair have they done anything because you know I don't blame them if they have I don't think they should have but you know people are bored with roots what can you expect um so I've been talking to them about their hair um, I've been recommending kind of about a month ago, I recommended a lot of them Colour Fresh from Weller because that's just a great way of like refreshing your hair with no kind of harm at home. So a couple of them have been using that. Um, and then I've just been kind of managing their expectations, I think. I think, you know, making sure where their price is going to be a little bit more expensive, um, which is always a bit scary for all of us. But I think if you pre-tell them, via a text or via a call it's less pressure in yeah. real life definitely um, sorry no worries there, <laughs> just the person, I, yeah. the person I text not to call me just called me oh, of um, course. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah so obviously just telling them it's going to be a little bit more but having that conversation before so you're not worrying about that mm. and for me personally because I'm self-employed I don't have to kind of follow the salon appointment schedule um, yeah. I'm not going to be booking clients in between my colours um, so I've had to kind of pre-do my consultation so I know exactly how much time 
to to book out for the client so I can maximize my day with having minimal people in the salon makes sense so are you making all of those decisions yourself then James you're kind of not you're doing your own thing so you what you do might be different to how the rest of the team in the salon might be working yeah so I think again yeah. because we don't even know how many people are allowed in or any rules or anything like that um, the salon I work at has been split and I think people are going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, one week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, the next week and swap. So there's, but for me, I'm just doing kind of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but just kind of like easy days just to kind of yeah. like work from that way. Um, but I think for me, I've worked with my clients for so long that I know exactly what they're going to need doing, um, you know, and colour correction, I've been speaking to them. And if any of them have touched their hair, um, I know I need to kind of see what they've done, book out longer yeah. and make sure I have the colour products in um, to deal with that. Because I don't um, specifically, I order on like a weekly basis normally. Mm. Whereas I've ordered in lots of, say, colour renew from Weller, which is an amazing like colour dissolver that's really conditioning that just takes away like any color like deposit um, and you can get like a shade or two of lift. So that's really great. Um, a shade or two of, sorry, tone remove. So that's amazing because I've been able to order stuff in like that that's gonna help me. Um, but I think it's just being in control of the client and being like, it's gonna be a little bit more, it's gonna take longer and we need to know exactly kind of what you're gonna, what you're thinking of before we start rather than just on the day being like, oh God, I'm running behind or because we can't really do that now. No, exactly. And we've had a great um, question from Rochelle. And um, she said, how do you cost in the extra colour for regrowth without upsetting your clients? Um, I think, do you know what? You just have to think of it as this. Um, you know, if you went to Starbucks and they were like, because we have to use brand new cups or something every time, it's going to be a pound more. I don't think you'd care because they explained why and you really want that coffee. Mm -hmm. So I just see it as like very similar to that. Like for me, if I normally use one tube of color, but I'm gonna have to use two, I need to cost in kind of a more, like it's not, otherwise you're just eating into your own money, especially as a freelancer, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so I think it's just like being really honest with them and just being like, hey, obviously you normally would have had two appointments by now, but you're only actually gonna be having one so we're going to charge an extra 20 pounds or 30 pounds on top. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this is because we want to make sure your hair looks amazing. But also I'm going to be using double the amount of products. So just think, even though it's 30 pounds more, you've actually saved money because you've not been able to come for that appointment. That so is, it's just honesty. Yeah, I think people appreciate honesty. Definitely. And then Catherine has said, um, how should mobile stylists prepare to go back to work? This seems like a very great area. Um, I guess obviously what you do is slightly different because you're kind of self-employed freelance, but in a salon, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I think it's just, again, you know, I, in a way, if you're, if you're at home header, so it's kind of easier because you are completely in control of when you want to work, what you want to do and stuff like that. So I think just contact all your clients, you know, ask them exactly what they want to have done. Ask them if they've touched their hair, you know what you normally use. Mm -hmm. And then if you think you're going to be using double, then make sure you obviously have that confidence and that honest conversation and tell them, you know, exactly what you, what you are going to need to do but also take this time to to really try new things with your clients you know like gray hair you know I always talk about Sharon Osborne um, yes. she looks amazing and obviously that was just pre-lockdown wasn't it that she I mean yes. went, went from red to gray yeah so I mean you know the amount of clients I've had that go I'd love to go gray but I just can't yeah. let my roots grow out They've got a four month regrowth now. So, yeah. you know, cash cash in on those color changes, you know? <laughs> um, you know, I think Wella have just launched Blonde or Plex. So that's an amazing lightener that obviously has the Wella Plex in the powder. So that's gonna make your life so much quicker and easier. But then using stuff like Illumina that's violet based gets the best grays. And I think if you can do big color changes like that, you can make money, but you don't have to do loads of clients. No. So those big services mm -hmm. are cash in on them because people now, you we make them feel so good that now is the time they're going to take risks and they're going to want to spend, I believe. 
Definitely, that's fantastic. So do you think we'll see a change in the trends then, James? Do you know what? I hope so. I mean, I love grey hair anyway. I love it. So I think it's just giving people the confidence, I think, because people are just stuck inside and they've been inside for so long. And they're like, now I don't care. I'm going to try that blonde or I'm going to try that toner. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I think now's the time just to take, you know, don't just have your clients and they'll be like, oh, so we've used seven stroke over the last five years. Let's put it on again. <laughs> like, try something new, even if it's just like a flash of magma or, or like a panel of something else. Just, And I think use this as an advantage because the hair is going to be more of a blank canvas than it's ever been. Definitely. And have you, have you taken that into consideration in terms of getting your stock ready? Have you sort of decided to have a few more adventurous shades in your kind of stockpile and things like that to try and make sure you've yeah, got I mean, there to... I mean, I love an adventurous shade. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I think for me, like I've kind of, my clients kind of go with what I think for them anyway, for that season. I don't tend to just keep the hair the same. Um, so I think I have definitely stocked up on a few different things, but um, I always use a product from Wella called Magma, which is amazing because it lifts and tones at the same time and you don't have to skin test for it. So those I've had quite a few new clients message me um and we were talking about this earlier you know it were, I've had yes. more, new, more new clients than ever which um, is fantastic mm, however I can't get them in for a skin test right now so I'm very limited on what I can offer however magma is a great way of doing balayage that will lift and tone at the same time so you don't have to do a toner so you're cutting that time out and also no skin test so I've obviously pre-spoke to them and said this is what you can have Brilliant. You know, so I will do the magma and then I'll skin test them after their appointment. So I think yeah. it's just, you don't have to order in more stock as such, but just be clever with kind of what you're ordering. Don't just order what you ordered in January. No, exactly. times have changed. Yeah, no, that's a really, that's a really good tip. And did those, those new clients that have reached out to you, did they give you any insights as to why they were reaching out to you? Like, are they ready to start fresh or... Um, had they seen um, something that you'd done that they thought was really cool? Because that's quite useful as well for a freelance and self-employed stylist who yeah. to grow their um, client base. Yeah, no, um, but they just DM'd me and said they've seen me on the popular Petty Explore page. Oh, and just clicked on it and just saw me from there. Yeah. Um, but also from the hashtag, like, if you put in, like, Balayage Birmingham, for example, mm -hmm. you know, that's a great way of getting clients to you. So I think I had a few from there, but... I think uh, if you, you kept you kept your hashtags localized. Some when I'm doing yeah. well, sometimes when I'm doing that like more client stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I think the best way to get lots of clients is to do a really amazing color change on someone with dark hair. Take them really light, and then you'll get an influx of people willing to invest. <laughs> amazing. We're getting quite a few questions coming in, James. They're quite varied, I have to say. Um, okay. First, um, we'll throw in Bev's question. Do you think we will be able to open on July fourth? And um, just to clarify, Bev, um, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are all working to different dates. And we have an article on our website on when will hair salons open in England, Ireland, Scotland and Northern and Wales. So do check out our article online and we're hoping to find out more about England specifically later today. So um, tune into the news. I think around 12.30 they're hoping to have an announcement. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, and then Alison Swingler has said, are you taking bookings now for 13th of July onwards? Again, I'm not sure where you're based in the country, Alison, but the 13th of July date is probably more specific. That's Wales, yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so you've got, so do check out our article, which has got all of the dates for the different parts of the country. Um, oh, here we go. So Sarah Sudley has said, are you going to skin test all of your regular clients because it's been so long? Do you know what? It's so difficult, isn't it? It's so difficult. Um, Good question. Mm, but I think, I think, yeah, I think definitely, mm -hmm. especially, expect a hundred percent if they've coloured their hair themselves without a shadow of yeah. a doubt. But you know, I think it's it's been over kind of three months. But I think for me, I think there's the certain questions that you can ask your clients that have they had a semi permanent tattoo, mm -hmm. things like that that can alter. Then, but I think for me, I think most of my clients are quite flexible and they'll understand. So I think I'm probably going to just cover my back and just be safe and skin test my client. Um, especially with, you know, tint that's going to be on their hair. 
regrowth, brunette, stuff like that. But I think for me, you you are just best off in any situation just skin testing because it's just not really worth it. And I think if you promote it in a way of it's for their benefit and not your benefit, then you're okay. Whereas yeah. if you're just like you need another skin test, I'll be like, why? Whereas if you're like because of everyone's immune systems. If you just blame Corona, that's always a way to get away with anything nowadays. <laughs> um, <laughs> you need to reskin test people. You yeah. know, you're for that one person that says no, you're going to get 20 people that will say yes. So just stick to the people that are willing to have a skin test. I would say definitely. And then or Denise, use magma on them, and you're you're solved. <laughs> well, um, Denise actually, um, a lady called Denise has asked, um, why do you not have to do the skin test with magma? So imagine magma is like a coloured bleach. So it's the bleach and toner together already in the hair. So you can't use it on the scalp, but for balayage, highlights, freehand techniques, it's just a really express, super quick um, technique that can lift and tone. So you're not mm. touching the scalp with colour. Um, it's a product I always talk about, and it's like a complete hero product from Weller that some people don't know about. And um, so I've literally got my favourite three shades of that ready to go so if my clients don't want a skin test i'll be like okay the only thing i can offer is this so at least i've got something to offer you know definitely no that's great and then going down the ppe route almi has um said how how are you going to approach asking clients to wear um face masks and coverings and washing hands etc yeah do you want to maybe talk us through james obviously how you're approaching ppe as an individual self-employed freelancer within the salon yeah you I think it's I think it's a tough one because at the start of this I was really positive and I was like we won't have to wear it it's fine but we I think we do <laughs> so I think it's almost like in, again like the prices like the skin test just be really confident with your approach and just say this is what is required for you to come into the salon uh, PPE I now see as part of my own personal kit mm. so as like a brush or a comb you know like the salon 100% will provide a lot of this, but I do feel like as a freelancer, it's kind of my responsibility as well to protect myself mm -hmm. and my clients. So I think I've got, I ordered quite a few masks that I have for clients. Gloves, obviously I have quite a lot of those anyway in the salon. Um, disposable aprons, we have those anyway. So I think it's kind of using, don't, I don't think it should be treated too dissimilar to how we were as long as we were clean and hygienic before. Yeah. It's just taking <laughs> that next level and just kind of educating your client. You know, you might get that one person that's like, I don't want to wear a mask, but mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of unfair on everyone else if everyone else is. Yep. And I think you'll feel silly if some are, some aren't. Are you Whereas, going to communicate that before, James, so that if you do have someone yeah. who doesn't want to wear it, they're not you're not going to have that conversation with them when they're already in the salon and refusing yeah. to? Yeah, and the thing is as well, we're very guilty, and I completely agree. If someone's saying no, but you're like, I'm going to make £300 from you, or you're like, oh, I've not earned money in four months, but I think it's just I've sent a text of what I think I will expect, but when I hear officially, it will yeah. then be like, right, send a list to every client. This mm -hmm. is exactly how it's going to be um you know the price increase all of that the skin test beforehand so you aren't worrying on the day all you want to do on the day is just create great hair you know um I went to Apple to get my phone fixed last last week and I had to have a temperature check on arrival they gave me a mask everyone in there was wearing a mask and I left through a different exit and it was absolutely fine because everyone was the same yeah. And I think it's if some are, some aren't, that's when it's like, oh, but if everyone's just the same, no judgment, no one cares that they're in a mask, it's simple. So I think it's and best to be like that. Definitely. And actually, James, we had a little bit of a chat, didn't we, about your Apple experience. And um, it, yes. was, it was great, actually, because you were saying you felt it was a better experience. Do you want to maybe talk about that and how you thought that yeah. actually... Do you know what? I just love to queue outside now. I mean, obviously, if it's raining, <laughs> probably not. But um, yeah, I mean one thing that clients are going to realize you know say if it's 20 pounds 30 pounds 40 pounds more there's going to be less people in the salon they're going to have more time with us there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot more care given to them and they're going to feel a lot more special so do you know what we need to remember that that is worth 40 pounds 50 pounds you know um in apple you know there was apple is we all know it's always crazy in there no matter when what time you go um, but they limited the amount of people in there. Everyone was in a mask, everyone kept their space. So I felt a lot more looked after than normal. 
And I think, remember that, that we are looking after our clients when we go back more than ever. You know, we're spending more time. It's just us. There's no toing and froing. There's more space for them. There's no like clients being put in chairs next to them. So they might be like, Do you know what? It's 40 or 50 pounds more for my color because I've got more roots and for this experience, but I actually prefer it. Yeah, exactly. My, you know, my, my I would. Things. Yeah, definitely. And actually, uh, Mandy asked, um, she's said that she's seen quite a few things about stylists um, being the only one to be able to touch their clients. So um, shampooing and um, anything else. Well, are you planning to kind of take your client from start to finish? To be fair, I shampoo most of my clients anyway, which no one ever believes, but it is true, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just because I'm, yeah. So... I've planned um, certain little things that's gonna make my life easier. So again, within Wella, there's a special um, lightener in Blondor called Mesh Cream, which you can put under heat for 15 minutes. So instead of like me standing there waiting for color to develop, I'm gonna do my freehand technique with that or my highlighting technique, develop it for 15 under heat, do my toner straight back to me. So I can like, because I know what my clients are, I've spoke to them, I know what they want, I know what color I can use. I've like planned it in my head that I don't need to squeeze someone in between. So I can shampoo, touch them, you know, all of that. <laughs> so I think, I think, you know, I think apprentices definitely still have their place, you know, to help you tidy up, to disinfect in your mm -hmm. section, you know, to make coffees for you. But I think for now, especially for the first month or two, mm -hmm. if you can keep everything to yourself. And then I think if you're shampooing, you're, you're doing your toner, which I always do my own toners anyway, it kind of justifies that little price increase as well because everything's being done by you and they do go to the salon for you so yeah that is very true that's a good point actually James to include that in terms of your explanation around the price increase yeah okay. because you know you are losing say if you do a haircut in between a color and you charge mm -hmm. 30 40 50 60 pounds you're losing that yeah so if they can see that and you're spending that entire mm -hmm. time with them I think that price that's invaluable you know that that experience Definitely. And I love the idea of um, embracing this and seeing this as a positive experience for the client as opposed to a negative and really sort of honing in on that and selling that to your clients. Yeah. Like, you're getting me for all this time. Um, you're getting me for all this time. Yeah. We can do a colour that we've always been scared to do, but you've got yeah. such a big root. Let's just do it. You know, I think use this time and use these big roots to, you know, try stuff you've never tried before, mm -hmm. to use colour products you've never used before, to give them the best experience you can. And they will remember it you know they're going to remember this first hair appointment they are, really are definitely we've got an interesting question from bridge who's in ireland james and yeah. in, in ireland they go back on the 29th of june so very soon on um, oh, my birthday what a great day to go yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about james birthday and the present he bought for himself a little bit earlier didn't we james? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so glad um, i know um so yes so um brid works freelance and mainly from home but also does film work as well and travels to people's houses. So Brid yep. was wondering about clients signing a standard waiver and if you have thoughts on that. Um, and also, would you recommend wearing a mask and a shield? A waiver for, it depends what it's for. for I mean, for a skin test yeah. and stuff, no, you know, you have to, you have, personally, you have to skin test, you know. I think if you ever have, a worry or a concern or you need to know then contact your Weller account manager or anyone like that and they will tell you the exact mm -hmm. guidelines and what you can and cannot do because they will know exactly but for me you know especially if we're going to someone's house or filming or anything like that, it's not worth it like mm -hmm. whenever I colour Fleur's hair or anyone that I work with who's like on a famous level or anyone like that still skin test them because they still are humans yeah. and I think we get a bit like oh it's on mm -hmm. set so we don't have to do it you do yeah you know it's, it's part of your professional standard of work I would say um so just maybe speak to your Weller account manager and just find out the 100% guidelines for your area and for your specific thing but I just think it takes two minutes it's easy it's worth it that's, cool. um, that's great yeah and then um another good question and it's very difficult so Joanne has said that one of her clients says she's got breathing problems and can't wear can't wear the mask then what? now is not the time to get your hair done. Do you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, like it's, I think one thing I've learned in my career is learn when to say yes, but learn when to yeah. say no, you know, it's not, it's not worth it. 
it's really not worth it for you. You know, you think about their safety, yes, but it's also our own personal safety as well that's the, at risk as such. Mm, yeah. So you're not you're not just wearing a mask for your client; you're wearing it for you and your family and everything like that. So mm. remember that, you know. Definitely. I think if good. someone's got breathing difficulties, absolutely not. FaceTime fringe trim. FaceTime fringe trim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Um, <laughs> So, oh, um, so Lorraine Hart has said a few of her clients are thinking of stop stopping colouring their greys. So would you recommend to them that they um, have, have a little colour that will give them a bit of shine? Um, yeah, so I have a few clients that are naturally white or grey or, you know, kind of grey here and they're just growing it out. So yeah. you can recommend something like an alumina colour glossing, which is when you mix alumina when one part alumina, one part, one point, one part, one point nine, one part um, conditioner, color save conditioner, and you literally just deposit the tone, but you don't really add as much depth. So it just gives us like a glaze of tone. So stuff like that is amazing for gray hair. So I would just recommend quick toning glossing services on gray if they just want to work with their gray. Stuff like that is amazing. So definitely, I would never just leave gray hair untoned because or uncolored because then you get that brassy gray, you don't get that luxurious gray, but you can get away with just quick toning services, yeah. Fantastic. And then um, just going back to the PPE very briefly, James, someone's asking, are you going to be charging a PPE fee for the PPE you're investing in to give to your clients and indeed for you to wear in the while you're working? Yeah, however, I'm gonna be charging more for everybody anyway. Yep. <laughs> not because <not> <laughs> I want to, well, you know. <laughs> but um, just because, you know, probably not, I don't really have any soul cutting clients. They're not, I think I've got like two, they're all color clients. So every single client is more work anyway. Mm, yeah. So instead of being like, oh, it's an extra five pound or 10 pound or this, I'm just literally going to like pre-do my consultation with them and be like, okay, this is your quote for the service. And then instead of being like, because we're wearing masks, it's five pounds or anything like that I'm going to be like because your colors more because it's my time longer time the mass it's like a whole total thing this is the price and I think it's less misleading that way and then they understand rather than this little bit is that much this little bit is that much mm -hmm. and do you think communication is key James getting all of these messages out early yeah. yes yeah I think early enough when we know the date Mm. you know a lot of people like I have booked up myself on the Friday on the fourth sorry yeah um with a couple of colors however um you know I have worn them it might not even be the fourth we are hoping um yeah. but just so you know as well and also I've messaged them saying um any appointment from now 100% I'll try and mm -hmm. stick to however if anything happens or if we're over capacity or anything you know the and to be fair 99% of people are more understanding than ever you know um, exactly. um yeah. as a freelance and um, self-employed member in a salon space will you be choosing which day you'll make your first day back so say the saturday is the day we're allowed to open yes you decide whether you want to wait until the monday or you know how that how will that work for you i think for me like normally in my diary is like really busy shooting mm -hmm. monday sunday monday tuesday wednesday mm -hmm. thursday and then clients friday saturday but at the moment i'm doing the odd shoot because we're allowed but not much so i've got more time so i would rather work kind of less hours but more days mm -hmm. come in do a couple of colors you know big color jobs mm -hmm and spread them over the days and cram them into to Friday, Saturday. So yeah, I'm lucky really. I think I've, I've just really taken control of my clients, taken control of their hair and told them how long and everything like that. Fantastic, no, that's great. We've had a question which I've just got to bring in because um, it is brilliant. Victoria has said she's got a client who has a phobia of masks. I think this sort of taps into what we were talking about before and the looking after yourself as well as looking after the client, doesn't it? <laughs> so what do you, the thing is like, I don't want to stand there in a blue medical hospital mask. Yeah. No one, no one in the country who's wearing a mask is wearing it because they want to wear it, you know? <laughs> um, like, oh, I look cute in this blue printed cloth mask I'm wearing. Like, I think it's just being like, unfortunately, it is the rule as, you know, if the client didn't want a skin test, you would not colour the hair. It's exactly the same as that. If the client doesn't want to wear a mask, and you have, and the government's telling you you have to. 
unfortunately she's going to have to wait have wait until we're not allowed until we're told then her phobia can be cured <laughs> <laughs> brilliant well we're getting to the end of our session james it's absolutely whiz by because we've had so many great questions during this session but before we wrap up do you want to maybe just share your tips your kind of final tips um from a freelance self-employed stylist point of view about this preparing to reopen yeah. process and what you, yes, you're so, going to be doing i mean obviously ireland is um republic of ireland is allowed to open from 29th of june so they've got maybe kind of like a week um, and yeah. the 4th of july if that goes ahead that's maybe more like two weeks what are you going to yeah. be doing in these last kind of few few weeks to make sure that you feel ready and prepped for your clients coming back as a freelance self-employed stylist so I think it's just making sure that I'm educated from a color point of view on all the products that I know can make my life easier. So if you've not heard of like Magma or Blonde or Mesh Cream or anything like that, go onto the link that's in here with the education on the Weller page. That, that will give you so many tips and tricks on how to make your life easier. So educate yourself, <clears throat> educate your client. Mm -hmm. Don't be scared to tell them it's a little bit more, to tell them they've got to wear a mask to tell them to bring their own iPad or magazine that they can't bring. We don't have any. Um, do virtual consultations. So, you know, FaceTime, anything like that, just five, 10 minutes where you tell them um, exactly what you're going to be doing, the price and assess their hair. Um, if you need to skin test the people, skin test them. Don't be afraid. Um, don't be afraid of the price and just make sure you're ready. And I think try and be as positive as possible you know like be like listen how great is this i haven't seen you in ages look at your roots oh my god look at the possibility look at the mm -hmm. endless possibility of what we can do rather than oh god look at the mass let's chuck your roots on you know yeah. try and <laughs> try and see it as we're going to be able to give them more premium service yeah. than we ever have mm -hmm. so really look after your client give them that time you know and then that 30 40 whatever price you're charging more they will not even notice and you might get some good tips on card if you're not allowed cash yeah yeah that's true definitely i think that's a great point there james you've got to sell it as that first class lounge as opposed to previously when you might have been in the economy you know so that yeah was hard seat. yeah yeah and just like it just you don't even realize that just by shampooing a client that you've never shampooed because you always give them to someone else they'll be like oh i've got james shampoo in my hair today like they love it <laughs> so like kind of you know sell it to them and i think you will have a you will have the best time you've you've ever had because it will be easier as such because you're just worth dealing with one person so definitely yeah. oh, fantastic well thank you so much for your words of wisdom james and for sharing all of your hints and tips um and yes thank you everyone for tuning in as well it's been a really great session and obviously we are getting closer to um the easing of lockdown so i do wish everyone the best of luck with all the the preparations that are happening at the moment and I'm sure, um, James, you'd be happy to answer anyone's questions and moving forwards as well. So I guess they can check you out on Instagram, see what you're up to, see how you're communicating with your clients as well. Yeah, of course. Feel yeah. free to DM me or anything. I'll answer all the questions. But good luck, everybody. Yeah, definitely. Back to work. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for watching. And we will see you very, very soon. Thanks, James. Thank you. Bye. Bye.